Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the guide. As you can probably see in the title, it's about Navy, Navy composition. Um, probably going to do something similar on uh, j infantry, uh, army, and uh, air. But I thought uh, let's start on Navy because that one's it's not the simple one, but that's just what I had in mind right now. And uh, the other one should come in, in the next up in the next week or so. So. Yeah, let's just get started. I'll choose UK now, but because uh, they're easy, that's big. But we can just swap around to Japan and uh, Soviet and Germany. And we're gonna talk about um, both. Y I'm gonna talk about the different majors and also what I think about them just in general. So let's start with in general. There are, uh, if we talk about Navy in the basic of Navy, there are a couple of stuff that's important to talk about. And that's uh, first off, there's four different, uh, what's it called? modes you choose from and uh, they're all used in, in they're used in different ways they are and uh, uh, we're gonna start with that so first one we have patrol that's that one's very very dispersed it's good to just catch the enemy so if we have anything like if they if you expect germany to be naval raiding with um, subs in this part maybe because it's this is the standard one um, to hint the trade with us well then Patrol is kind of good way of countering it because uh, you um, you are basically you're checking the hole as much as possible uh, with your ships ships except this part because we can't reach it but um, and that's about that's <laughs> that's sad but uh, otherwise the rest of this we're gonna be checking around for enemy activity and uh, and so that one's kind of simpler and for that you're mainly going to be want using destroyers and uh, uh, you, you, for the patrol one, if you want to maximize the counter going anti subs, which is convoy raiding, you want to be using destroyers because they destroy subs very well, and maybe light cruisers, but the, just in case they have anything but subs. But in that case, you should also be using heavy cruisers. But the thing is, heavy cruisers are weak to subs, so I would say mainly destroyers. But you need some firepower in light cruisers, maybe one or two heavy cruisers. I would say, and they sh it shouldn't be too big as well. Like twenty is a good number for destroyers, and maybe five and one. So like, it's it's cool. And if we go to d certain destroy bits, this, this one is the most important one because this is all all these big naval battles and. Uh, in the Mediterranean and uh, British Channel and that English Channel and all that stuff uh, where the, the big battles, Battle of Jutland in World War One and that stuff, that search and destroy. You keep all of your ships at one place. It's not good to counter subs and that stuff. And you really want. You could actually. There's a way. You. Uh, there's a thing where you. Let's say we have these destroyers. You want. You put them on patrol here, and then you take your search and destroy fleet. You put it on. Search and destroy in the same area, so the patrol go on to patrol the area, and this is really effective. And they and if they catch a subs, they will destroy the subs. If they catch other things, these guys will soon catch up and d destroy it. And this works quite well. And then you don't need any destroyers in the fleet. You could have all of these on patrol and the rest on just uh, um, search and destroy. That's a usual, that's good strategy if you. If you're going down naval doctrine, that's another thing which we should talk about. I'll do it later. Naval doctrines, and if we <clears throat> also check out na na convoy rating, yeah, that's that's basically you you use subs and you <laughs> you want them to destroy the enemy convoys, okay? And convoy escort, that's uh, also a destroyer's. It's it's the thing is it's it's in in theory it's supposed to convoy escort. Uh, these guys can use, and also another thing, convoy escort and patrol are similar in the way that you can use destroyers to catch subs this way, and it's quite effective using a convoy escort instead instead of patrol, and I, I could recommend it, but uh, the thing with that mainly, the main use of convoy escort is to use it with your whole ba your whole fleet and just to protect when you naval invade somebody. That's what I use it for. I've seen some people using it instead of patrol to catch subs. I don't know if it's better. Maybe you guys know better in the comments. I'm not a pro naval user. This is just my experience. So that's the different modes. Okay, let's talk about doctrines now. But in doctrines, in terms of doctrines, we have uh, fleeting being, which is basically you, you're focusing on search and destroy. You have battleships. You have a, you need a carrier ship. So you need a a ship that's the carrier ship that's the battleship maybe a battle cruiser is or should also work 
but you need at least one of them in each fleet and you don't want one big stack okay you need to have um depending on the naval base so like let's say dover i think that's a 10 no it's a six shit which one is a 10 here su6 is okay, my bad very mistake state okay <laughs> Uh, so, Su-6, this is a 10 one, so you want about 90 to 100 ships here, including a carrier, a battleship, maybe two battleships, yeah. And screening in terms of cruisers, destroyers, no subs, really. And uh, and if it's and in the 60 one, you want 50 to 60 one, so uh, you don't want to be over the limit, that's a thing, so... And you should have some spare, and here's a 10, so there you can have a big fleet as well, and you want to use it as home fleet, so... So you control right click and you set that as home home base. So and so big fleets you want them in the big home bases. It's kind of straightforward, but uh, you want home bases to be s quite separated. So <clears throat> if you have all of your home bases here in southern England, well they can just uh, uh, do what are they called raiding. What's what's the raiding called? Kamikaze? No. Port strike, port strike, yeah, we can port strike them all. So you want them to be dispersed all over England and probably some with something here. You can even uh, build it, build up even more, just because it's important to separate it. And uh, I think at least, because Germany, that's something. If if you're a German and you're up against a really bad player, they usually just have everything and don't really care. And you can really take them off guard and just destroy their fleets with port strikes. And don't want that, so. So, uh, what's it say? Yeah, fleeting being. You want to go, if you're going down fleeting being and you're having this kind of thing, it's, um, fleeting being is a standard one. If you don't know what you're gonna go down, you sh should probably go down fleeting being. And you wanna start with the left side, because it maxes out your battleships, then you're gonna d go down the middle one. Well, it depends. The left one, if you have battleships from the beginning, middle one first if you only have subs. And uh, when you've gone down this, you want to go down these two, and lastly, go here on the right side. I f that's what I feel like, so these two first, you can do them in whichever order, but uh, depending on if you have more destroyers or battleships. Okay, trade interdiction. That's if you're playing Germany or another nation that you feel like you, you're just going to have subs, because you, you don't want to build a lot of naval dockyards, you don't uh, want to um, invest in that kind of stuff, you just want to destroy the and uh, disrupt the enemy. Then you're going to go down here, and you want to start with, I think it's, uh, which one is it? Yeah, it's the left side again. Go down here, uh, pick, the, the, oh, wait, what? Wait, did I say anything wrong? Is it the right side? Yeah, it's the right side, yeah, my bad. You want to go down the right side, pick up wolf pack, and the rest down here, because it's really strong, and because this, this one isn't really that good. <laughs> I was thinking this one was uh, this one mainly, because this is the good one. I like this one a lot, wolf packs and the ones after it. So right side, and then you just do the rest here. I don't care about that, really. This is the important one. After this, you can basically stop. You don't need to do more. Same thing here, actually. You want to pick up this one, but this you can actually skip if you don't want to. And base strike. That's if you're focusing on carriers and not battleships. So it's similar to fleeting being, but it's mainly... It's only USA and Japan that can do it. <laughs> so USA and Japan should do it because they have carriers for the rest. And not really. Fleeting being is better for UK because UK will be and France will be fighting Italy's navy and that kind of stuff. So that's <laughs> that's uh, naval doctrines. Hopefully you're with me. Oh, and here you want to start with the right side, go down here, and if you have time, do the middle one and then the left. No, no, right side, then the left side, and then the middle one. Middle one is worse. Yeah, because it's anti-sub. Okay, and subs you don't need to be anti-sub as USA or Japan. I've seen, I've never seen a Japan that goes for submarines versus USA, because <laughs> it's stupid. They don't, they don't trade with anyone here in the Pacific. They only trade here. Okay, that's naval doctrines. Now we're gonna do some naval composition. We did that. Um, let's talk about research. Well, in terms of research, I feel like it's very important to get. Um, the best sub. If you're gonna use subs, the, the next sub is main is the most important one because you will be pumping out tons of these. And if you have a, a chance of picking up a dull time or a 100% like thingy ahead of time thingy, you should uh, definitely do it for like this one. Destroy focus. It's really good. And the combo escort focus. So usually you do this as uh, UK, but it's really important to pick these two up. And basically immediately going for this one and uh, getting that one. So you'll just have really good uh, destroyers. Another thing you can do is going for battle cruisers. I, l I like the battle cruiser strategy, rushing this one. And just uh, say screw to this. 
and stuff. Because it's, it's, it's good. It's similar. It's, it's quite similar. It's worse, yeah, but it's cheaper. Costs less resources, chromium, oil. And oil is the main thing, that it costs less stuff. And you're not lacking it as UK, because you have, uh, <laughs> you have uh, puppets and such. But still, it's, it is a problem. It is a problem. Let's go here. Oh, well. I thought this, uh, the UK had a way of getting it. Maybe we don't. <laughs> what the fuck? British Malaya. Yeah, we have some. I thought we had a bit more, like 30 or something. Okay, my bad. We actually have a sm slight problem. Okay. Next thing to talk about is the importance of controlling the straits. Like this straight here. Uh, you see it here with Danish belt. And here we have Schleswig Holstein thingy. Kiel Canal, yeah. And uh, the Gibraltar and Suez. That's the most important ones. But all of these are important, uh, as well as Istanbul thingy. Bospor Strait. There are other others in the world, but these are the main. These, two, these three here. The Istanbul one, the Suez, and the Gibraltar. You need to lock them down either side, whatever side you're on, Axis or Allies. And so it's it's holding it is in terms of uh, infantry capabilities, but still it's good to think about because if you lose them and your ships are in here, well, and uh, Francis capitulates, you have nowhere getting out. Well, your ships are all probably gonna die. <laughs> And that's uh, something to f think about at least, that uh, v straight exists, so just saying it. And the Kiel Canal, I think it's quite a funny one, but you can just, whoop, if you control it, you can walk through here. Uh, other stuff about naval that I'm not thinking about at the moment, I've talked about this, research, oh yeah, more research. The, this is, these aren't that important, I feel like the cruisers to getting them top notch, you can just wait. I like the destroyer, I like m not even getting this one, like if you have this one, uh, you, you should probably, you should absolutely research this as uh, UK, but uh, it's not that important getting the next one, you can just keep producing this one. And another thing is how you beat, that I got a question a while ago, how do you beat a big navy? As Japan, you're always behind US in terms of your navy, how do you beat their navy, how do you win? Well, you basically can't. That's the thing. You you can't win. And that's the cool part. So let's tag over to Japan. You can never beat U.S. Navy, but you can do some stuff to uh, to mix with it <laughs> too. And that is basically you need to gather up your fleet and have a big fleet and lead them into a trap. So. Let's say U.S. engaged you. You put some. You sacrifice some boats in leading them into, uh, like in here or so, in this part, and then you have prepared naval uh, air bases on these islands here. These two here. Maybe even this one if you have tactical bombers, and uh, when we get to, and if you still control these islands, but you can even do it in here. But you need air bases. That's the thing. You you're looking for leading. Ver you sacrifice some boats. Get them into a tarp down in here somewhere let's say you use airplanes to strike it from these air bases at the fleet at the same time as your fleet engages uh, your fleet comes in later so you have your fleet here they engage here you move over you attack and you uh, you need to basically gamble it all on uh, these airplanes winning it for you because us will have a lot of carriers and you will have a lot of carriers you you just gotta hope that uh, you have more planes than them, and and because uh, they can't get help if you control the islands, so that's a small thing you can do as Japan. US doesn't really have the capabilities. Another thing you can do as Japan, if you don't, uh, if you know you can't beat them, is get paratroopers and get all of these islands. You get every single island here in the Pacific. US can't reach you, and you can just chill with your navy here, and they'll need to take it back. But they'll need to sacrifice a lot to take it back. Because, well, we'll need to get control here, send troops over with naval invasion, because we can't reach your paratroopers. And then you'll just have tons of troops here, just holding the islands and making sure we can't reach you. So, there's some stuff you can do to, uh, and also defeating <laughs> Australia and New Zealand is a big thing if you want to make sure US won't get you. Because we're good allies for USA to send the fleet down through here, down here, use their naval bases. Go up here, take take back this land in Indonesia and such. So yeah, there's, there's some stuff you can do to contradict US uh, OP, OP, OP. But it's it's hard. It's really hard, and it's it's a lot of training and luck and uh, just timing all around. 
I don't think there's anything else I should talk about in terms of navy. I think I've covered all in terms. And uh, another thing, you should definitely leave comments down below and ask me if I missed anything. And if you have any questions about the navy and how the navy works and uh, that kind of stuff. But otherwise, I'm gonna probably start working on some other videos now. So and guides about army and air now. So if you have any suggestions, what you want to see next, uh, leave comments down below. Tell me, uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.